Greetings. My name is Bryce Sharp, also known as Bert. You may know me from such productions as Spencer Don't You Come Home No More, Madeline the Moderator, and Abigail. Hey there, Abigail. Today we have a special treat, as over the next few weeks I will be reading from some select classics. Today I am reading from the book The Adventures of Huckleberry Spencer. Join me as we look into the world of Spencer. Page one. The Burt Gang. <clears throat> you don't know me if you haven't read The Adventures of Burt. Mr. Mark Twain wrote that book. Most of it was true. Some things weren't exactly true, but everybody lies sometimes. Well, maybe not Tom's Aunt Polly or the Widow Douglas, though. They were in the other book. The book ended like this. Bert and Stumpleberry Spencer found some money in a cave and it made us rich. We got ourselves six thousand dollars each in gold. That's a lot of money. So we gave it to Judge Thatcher to keep it safe. The widow Douglas made me her son. I'll teach you to be polite, she said. But Huckleberry Spencer didn't want to be polite. I didn't like living in a house all the time. She even dressed me in nice clothes, but I really didn't like them. So one night, Huckleberry Spencer put on his old clothes and ran away. But Bert found Spencer. Bert said, I'm going to start a gang of robbers. If you go live with that widow again, you can join the gang. So Huckleberry Spencer went back. When Spencer got back, the widow cried with happiness. She kissed Spencer and said, My poor little baby's come home. I didn't, Spencer didn't like that, but she meant it in a nice way. Then it all started again. Spencer had to sleep in a bed, and Spencer had to wear new clothes. Spencer even had to be polite at dinner. One night, Spencer went to his room feeling real lonely. Then he heard something. It sounded like a cat. Meow. Meow. Spencer went to the window and looked down. It was Bert waiting for him. Spencer climbed out the window to meet Bert. He <clears throat> Together they went toward the trees in the widow's backyard. They had to be very quiet. But when we passed the kitchen, somebody fell. The widow's old slave Jim heard the noise and said, Who that? Jim listened carefully, but Spencer and Bert didn't say anything. Then Jim came out in the backyard and he stood very near us. But Spencer and Bert was so quiet that he never saw him. Then Spencer's foot began to itch, but he couldn't move. He didn't want Jim to hear him. The itch moved to Spencer's ear. Next, it moved to Spencer's back right between them shoulder blades. It happens a lot. When Spencer has to be quiet, he starts itching in a thousand places. Soon, Jim said, hey, where are you? Who's there? I know I heard me something. I'm gonna sit right here until you come out. And Jim sat down between Bert and Spencer and he didn't see him. He just sat against a tree and waited. Spencer's nose began to itch. Then, Spencer started to itch on the inside. Well, Spencer just itched in 11 different places. But Jim finally fell asleep and all the itches stopped. Bert, he came to me real quiet and said, let's tie Jim to the tree just for fun. He said, oh, that's too dangerous, 
Spencer said. So then Bert went to Jim real careful like. He didn't want Jim to wake up. Bert took Jim's hat and hung it in the tree above his head. Then Bert and Spencer ran as fast as they could into the woods. The next day, Jim told everybody the story. Ghost put me to sleep, he said. They picked me up and took me all over the state of Missouri. And then they brought me back and hung up my hat in the tree. Later, when he told the story again, all over the state of Missouri changed to all over the United States. The next time, it was all over the world. See, Jim loved to tell stories, and people loved to hear them, too. Well, people walked for miles to hear his story of ghosts. When we left Jim, he was still asleep. Bert and Spencer ran all the way to town and found some other boys. Then, they all followed Bert to his secret hiding place. There was a small hole in a hill, and we climbed through into a big cave. Bert told everybody about his gang of robbers. We'll call it the Spencer Gang, he said, and this can be our hiding place. We all had to sign our names in blood. We also promised not to tell anybody <coughs> about the gang. Tom said, if anybody tells, the gang will kill his family. Then, Huckleberry Spencer can't join because he doesn't have family, somebody said. You can kill a widow. She's almost family, Bert suggested. Everybody thought that was a good idea. So Spencer joined the gang. Then somebody asked, well, what did Robert do? Bert said, well, they steal things, of course, and they ransom people. Ransom? What does that mean? I don't know, said Bert, but Robert do it. I read it in a book, so we got to do it. We have to bring prisoners to the cave and ransom them. Then we we'll kill the men, but we we'll keep the women until they fall in love with us. Bert said, "Soon we'll have a cave full of women. There won't be any room for us robbers." But we all they all agreed to be robbers. All right, you can all go home now. Bert said, "We'll meet up next week. Then we can rob somebody and kill some people." So they all went home. Huckleberry Spencer climbed in his bedroom window just before the same sun came up. His new clothes were all dirty and Spencer was very tired. But Spencer wasn't worrying about that. 